We just kind of like started, we walked the dock one day, we're just looking at sailboats. My friend Jim, my friend now, was sitting there and he was having a beer and he just started chatting us up and invited us aboard to have a beer. And we said yes and started telling us he probably wanted someone to live here and take care of it. I'd done some carpentry work and like done some boat work in the past. It was like a work trade, you know, he doesn't get out here much. I mean that whole like interaction though with Jim on the boat was like 10 minutes where he, we met him, he decided he liked us, we kind of, I mean, maybe we charmed him a little bit, but I, don't, I think we were just being real, like we are looking for a place to live. And I kind of had an idea, because I have some sailboat experience, and I know that people have a hard time selling boats. Corey. I'm Maya, and welcome to the Sea Monkey. It's 10.30 at night here, I don't know if you can tell, mid-July, and we've been living here for two months, I think. Two months on the boat. That's where we keep some of our gear, and we keep the skis out here when we're doing stuff with them, but they go inside sometimes. Or we throw them on the truck and drive them around, but they're just safer, they're not gonna get broken, so it's it's like our outdoor closet. Sailboats especially, they sit in marinas all over the world because people don't know. There's there's always almost always more boats than there are sailors, and a lot of people like the idea and then don't have the money to maintain them. So I knew there were a lot of boats that were probably in Seward sitting here, and we'd seen for sale signs, and. So I was just kind of like, well, let's look through Craigslist. So I sent out a couple emails and I was like, hey, we're looking for housing. We'll pay your mortgage if you're willing to let us live there. And I got some interest, but we were like, no, we should. Like, let's go look at all the other boats. And so when we were walking the docks down here, when we met Jim, we were we had been talking and looking and just trying to like, we took pictures of, I think, 35 boats that were for sale by owner in the marina, just like about to call everyone and see wow. if we could pull something off. And I thought that, it was a cool idea, but it was just like a slim chance that we would pull this together and then it was the second dock we walked down where we met Jim. And what, did this have a for sale sign on no, it? No, not so at all. So this was just completely This was just totally total random. Yeah. So the boat next to us is a boat we work on now. It's a boat that takes us out to our kayak trips and they're our neighbors. And so we've been able to talk to the captains of that water taxi quite a bit. And I've heard people say they've never seen a person on this boat in 10 years. So the fact that there was a person on the boat when we walked by that day at that time is like quite the crazy coincidence. It was pretty cool that that's how it worked out. This is the, the back deck back here, kind of the after work hangout zone or morning cup of coffee. We use this this uh, space for just some outdoor storage for muddy boots and kayaking gear, skateboards like that. And we've got a nice rain cover because it rains most of the time. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're nice and closed. One of the few boats around that has the canvas cover on the back which has proved to be crucial. Big, yeah. It's critical. So this is like nice when we have wet kayak gear that we don't want to bring inside the boat but we don't want it to get wetter. It stays out here and you know kind of hang dry. <laughs> Welcome to our kitchen space. We have our stove here, propane. We only have one burner that works right now, so that's this guy. Well, this one works, but there's stuff in the way. So, we use this burner to do all of our cooking. We have an oven, but we use it for storage. That's where everything lives. And then our cups and plates and everything are back here. And this is our ice box. Most people didn't use ice boxes after the 1900s, maybe. But uh, we use it. An ice box is great on the sailboat because it doesn't use any electricity, so we just put ice blocks in it and it stays cold for a while. Got running water, which is a huge Luxury. plus here. Can't complain about that. And the um, foot pump. And the foot pump. Extra storage back here, a little quarter berth. We kind of just have that full of uh, gear and things like that. It's kind of our little toolbox zone. It's like camping gear and sleeping bags and, and things that we don't want to leave in the truck for the whole summer. Some of the things like the bilge pump has to be on in order for the stove to work. It's one of the <laughs> little tricks that we had to learn. But we got a stereo, water pressure, heater, um, turn the lights on and off. So we do use that. Um, that's kind of for like electricity. Mainly. We're both trained as uh, backcountry chefs, you could say. <laughs> that's so, kind of the thing so we do. <laughs> cooking on a single burner stove, something we've been doing for a long time. Um, yeah. So it's pretty simple actually and it's it's undercover we're not in the rain yeah. so it's pretty easy um, it's, it'd be hard yeah. if you came from a normal house you'd have to it takes some getting used to you know like if you prep something you're prepping on top of the ice box a lot or if you are 
doing two things at once, like you got it, one pot meals are great. Yeah. So we do that kind of stuff. We learn how to use the same pot for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So here we are in the, uh, the living room, you could say, of the boat. We've got the two couches here, which are nice for hanging out on. We got the table um, that actually folds up against the wall if you need extra space, but it's kind of nice to have it out here. So this is where the uh, games of cribbage happen, <laughs> board games, reading, um, just kind of our living space. Well, the boat came fully furnished uh, with everything uh, that Jim had had on it. So actually, most things are stored behind the couches here. Oh, all um, of his stuff is. Yeah, so we have most things are um, stowed back there and underneath pretty much everything stored, so we kind of uh, organized all of that and put it away in the designated areas, like we got our uh, dry goods there, and some clothes and books here, this is just some more Jim's clothes and things like that, so. There's actually a lot more room on this boat than we have access to, like he has so much stuff on it that we cut down even more when we got here, like we cut down a lot before. But, uh, like, this is my whole clothing closet right here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but that's, like, what I've limited myself down to. And then a couple down jackets. You don't, we don't have, like, a lot of changes of clothes. We, don't, we brought too much, really. We, we definitely did. A lot. We just need a couple <laughs> pairs of everything and yeah. call it good, so. This right here is a V-Birth, what everyone calls a bedroom. It's the front of the sailboat. And so, also called the bow and that's where it goes to a point, so it makes a big V and it makes a really great place to sleep. So we have just cushions, just like you would, and so our sleeping quarters. It's really cozy, it works out nicely like a den. We actually, because it's still light in Alaska at night all the time, we keep it pretty dark. So we have like a cover over the ceiling top and then we have surfboards blocking the light out of one of the windows. And so it sees a little darker back here and helps us sleep. This is the head. We're mainly just using it for storage uh, right now because it's not functioning. But it's a cool little little zone in here, um, good for storage. We're hoping to fix it. That's kind of one of our work trades. Um, so what's wrong? It's an old toilet that just hasn't had a lot of use. So some of the gaskets uh, are cracked. So it's not getting any any pump when you do it there. Um, it's just saving it for a for a day. We have to remove the toilet and actually. Take it apart, put new gaskets in there, um, clean the lines out, and you know hopefully it'll it'll work again. So we know Jim would be real happy if we got that working for him, and it'd be nice to have a functioning head on the bathroom. But for now, it's a good place to you know dry wetsuits and dry suits and uh, all kinds of gear. My main thing that I'd encourage people to do is to start if you shift your mindset and you start to become comfortable being a little bit uncomfortable. And I think we tend to think I need to be as warm as possible, as fed as possible, as like dry and everything needs to be perfect. And when you take a step back from that and say, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm gonna get cold every once in a while. Like maybe you're cold for an hour, that's okay. You know, there's a certain amount of learning to adapt to an environment and trusting that your body can handle that and maybe you're not gonna have a toilet on board, but you're gonna be okay, you know? And that's all right. Or, you know, maybe you're gonna have to figure out how to get ice blocks. But I think overall, we are very adaptable creatures and our bodies are totally capable of handling a lot more than we give them credit for. And I think our minds are as well. And it's really important if you want to change anything or go and take a step in any direction, have faith that you can do it, you know? It's not that hard, but a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, you know, well, well what if it rains? <laughs> and in life it rains, like that's okay, you know, in a, in a metaphor and in real life. So I think that would be my, that'd be my advice is go, go for it, you know, in a sense, not in the cliche sense of like, you know, charge, but like yeah, go and, fun. yeah, just go and, you know, have faith in yourself. You can do it. It's, you know, it's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you just summed it up. <laughs> my, yeah, um, yeah, just try it. I don't know. It's uh, it's easier than you'd think. Totally. <laughs> and it's good to find things that are small that you like to do, too, you know? Like, we love to play cribbage. And we, you know, we like, our, we like to be warm, so we have a little heater that helps us stay warm. And that, like, makes us really happier. You know, you have small things that, you know, 
but this is like, this will make me happy today if let's play a cribbage game. And we do. And that's, you know, it's, it's good. Yeah, words of advice, just go for it. Yeah. And play just cribbage. try it. Yeah, or something, you know, <laughs> something that's old, you can do it. You, know, you can always play cribbage. Awesome, <laughs> thanks guys. Yeah.